সুস্বাগতম শ্রী বিমল এডুকেশন চ্যানেলে সকলকে স্বাগত জানিয়ে আজকের ভিডিওটি সম্পূর্ণ দেখবার জন্য অনুরোধ করছি স্টুডেন্ট উইক অবজারভেশন টু থাউজেন্ড থেকে শুরু হলো ননী ভট্টাচার্য স্মারক মহাবিদ্যালয় জায়গার ননী ভট্টাচার্য স্মারক মহাবিদ্যালয়ে দুই তারিখ থেকে আট তারিখ স্টুডেন্ট উইকস অবজারভেশন টু আজ তার ছিল ইনোগ্রেশন উদ্বোধনী দিন আজকের দিনে এই অনুষ্ঠানের শুরুতে তথ্য সমৃদ্ধ বক্তব্য রাখলেন ডক্টর অভিজিৎ চক্রবর্তী মহাশয় কিছু এই অনুষ্ঠানের কিছু মুহূর্ত এই ভিডিওতে উপভোগ করুন ধন্যবাদ যদি আপনাদের এই জাতীয় ভিডিও ভালো লাগে এডুকেশন সংক্রান্ত হায়ার এডুকেশন সংক্রান্ত তথ্যর যদি আপনাদের প্রয়োজনে আসে আপনারা অবশ্যই সাবস্ক্রাইব করবেন লাইক করবেন এবং শেয়ার করবেন ধন্যবাদ that do not anger the rishi why why do you think you guy rishi should not be angered if you go back to the ethics they tell you that rishi sharp de de tha sharp ka tha nahi tha direct cheez ka tha ki a rishi had a number of following behind him in the form of his students okay a hegemony has been created in the students right so if you anger him you are actually challenging a big social group i have seen the entire thing sociologically i will give you my point okay if you have any rebuttal you can simply pose it up and i try to address that as well so that we have to have sorry so that we can have an interactive session as well as telling you anyway so in the process this was the process or this was the sole reason for which education was important and there was a, a, a minor reason as well that this is possibly only one wealth in the world which does not decrease if you think it keeps on increasing okay all other forms of wealth all other forms of human achievement if you go on uh, disseminating them if you go on scattering them if you go on dividing them okay it decreases right i have two cases of gold if i think that from tomorrow i'll give 10 grams to each obviously in the next week i'll become a pauper but this is only one form of wealth which does not decrease that also man was well aware of that he is going to polish his own intellect so therefore the point i'm trying to make is this that when man decided that education needs to be disseminated it's not because of philanthropy it is also because of a power structure of which the teacher tried to be a part everything in this world unfortunately is a question of power and this we have become too aware only in postmodern times predominantly through the work of a western thinker called michel foucault most of my colleagues would be uh, familiar with this name if not his work at least okay that every structure this was first spoken up by marx also and then it was taken up by foucault saying that every structure is actually a power structure so now get over that now what does it preach only recently i have just started reading the upanishad one of the upanishads as i am <coughs> predominantly interested in philosophy for my own sake the philosophy is not my dominant subject i will read up for kato upanishad okay when you will see there is another similarity and why am i harping upon it please do not think that i am i am addressing a subject which has no relation to our present context because in addressing this topic i am addressing the question of classroom education what we talk say or call today as classroom education started in prehistoric times in the form of the gurukuls in india and in the greco roman culture 
under certain philosophers. There is another similarity. Do you know that? That most of these teachings or most of the gurus, gurus in India and the teachers of ancient philosophers, when they preach even in the West, most of it is in the form of dialogues. They are dialogic exchanges. Okay? For instance, Plato's dialogues. Plato's dialogues are very, very famous dialogues which was written around 400 BC, right? 400 BC, in every dialogue that Plato wrote, Socrates is a common character. Socrates is a common character, along with him there is another character, and in the midst of a discourse, going between or taking place between Socrates and this predominant character, we have the central gist or the crux of the problem being solved. The same thing happens in our country as well. Recently, as I was telling you, I, was, I am reading the Katopanishad. In Katopanishad, the central discourse is between two characters. Yam on the one hand, means Jom, Jomraj, okay, Yam on the one hand, and Nachiketa on the other. And there I came across a two very exciting concepts which has everything to do with classroom education, you know. Two concepts. <coughs> One is that the fact that a student has to go to the Guru and stay over there. Okay, he has to stay over there. But initially, did you know that when a student went to the Guru from the very next day, the Guru did not start imparting education to him. In Sanskrit, there is a term that is being used in the Katapurisha. It is called Samitpani. Samitpani is a stage wherein the student who has gone to the Guru, he, his only job is to stay over there, gather firewood, and draw water from the well or bring water from the ponds so that the household can go on. That went on for about a year. Now this was also, this, this ritual called Samit Pani, as the Upanishad says, was also very emblematic. It was symbolic, symbolic of what? The dry goods that the student brought from the jungle so that the Guru can cook his meal, okay? This dry wood is symbolic of the readiness of the student. It is symbolic in the sense that the student has to be like dry wood. And what is the Guru? The Guru is like the fire. Okay? So that any flash of lightning coming from the Guru should catch fire instantly if the wood only is dry. And therefore, every student had to go through this phase called the Samit Pani phase. When they lived in the household of the Guru, the Sanskrit term for that is Ante Vasi. Ante Vasi living within the Gurukul but not taking direct lesson from the Guru. For the first one year, his only job was to carry firewood and draw water from well and ponds so that the household of the Guru and their cooking can be maintained. Okay? So this stage, you see, so again, there is a direct co-relationship between the teacher and the taught. A direct co-relationship. The teacher is like a spark of fire. It is his spark, his intellectual spark, which shall catch fire in the dried student. So therefore, the student has to be like dried wood. Am I clear up to this much? Okay. So now, uh, should I make it shorter? No? Are you sure? If you are getting bored, please. No. Uh, supposed to be a ritual, I can do it any time. We are enjoying it also, sir. Okay. The child bevels are like a little bit. Yeah, what's your coffee? I love you also. Anyway. So, now, in that, Ashina, on the other hand, the Sanskrit roots also give us a different meaning. It is the blessing which comes out of the Guru, the grace. At what time? Grace. Grace is also called Dakshina in Sanskrit. So, Shankaracharya is saying the image of the Guru should be Dakshinamurti. Maneho che, 
कृपा बहुत करे जे जिनी काम कर जे समान इस गिवन यू ग्रेस एक्सप्लेनिंग दैट देर इन द कटोपोनिशन देर इस अ फेमस पैसेज एल्यूडिंग टू द बुद्धा बुद्धा के एल्यूड कोड बोल चें जब बुद्धो बुशे आ चें छात्रों का बुद्धा इस सिटे डाम देर ऑल स्टूडेंट्स हैव कम दे आर सिटे डेट इस फीट द बुद्धा डेसन स्पीक the Buddhist says the Buddha doesn't speak. However, all doubts that are arisen in the mind of the students are getting resolved automatically in the presence of the teacher. Now do you understand why I have read this topic? So, the presence of the teacher is of paramount importance therefore, doesn't it? If every doubt that has enraged or that has taken place within the mind of the student can be resolved, only in the presence of the Buddha, that means the teacher is of fundamental importance. Right? Isn't it? His presence it is that is solving all sort of paradoxes which must have alighted in the mind of the students. So that was the image of education in ancient times. Now, Coming to contemporary form of education, contemporary form of education started with the democratization of institutions from the 17th century onwards and predominantly in Europe. You must be knowing this, at least I expect my students to know this, that even when the Britishers came to India, we had this concept of the toll, where a who actually operated today. ओके और पंती जब मशहूर हुआ था तो वो अपने लिए टूर एक वो अन्य वेरी पर्सनल लेवल ये अपने लिए पर्सनली मेकिंग इज लिविंग आउट ऑफ ऑर्डिनल द स्टूडेंट्स वुड गिव इट बट इट वाज एन स्टेट स्पONSर सो स्टेट स्पONSरिंग ऑफ एजुकेशन केम एट द बिगेस्ट ऑफ द वेस्ट एंड इट केम विथ द डेमोक्रेटाइजेशन ऑफ � this arena should also be democratized. But again, there was no philanthropy involved here. Why no philanthropy? Because when a, when a teacher operated personally, okay, there were certain problems. In our country, not all people got access to education. That is again a Hindi film like. Uh, I mean, beautiful story that we are supposed to think that all people were educated. No, Ekalapur didn't get education from Dronachai. Okay? Why? Because his caste didn't fit into it. So while our society was cleft or riddled by divisions of caste, you should think that the West was very progressive. They did not have barriers. They also had barriers. They had class barriers. We had caste barriers. They had Class values, even in the current period, most students who get education because they didn't match the hierarchy. They did not fall in the hierarchical setup. Okay? Therefore, it was felt that in order to democratize education, in order to bring every person under the ambit of education, the school system needs to come about. Otherwise, as long as education remains a personal endeavor, education will only be for a select few. Yeah. Therefore, the school education system came. Now, the school education system came from the school. You are seated at a higher level. You are in higher education. Therefore, in college education today, okay, which is the higher form of the school education, we have this democratic process where everyone, irrespective of his birth, Irrespective of his caste, his social status, everyone has the right to take education. But now, coming to the crux, what are the merits of classroom education? I have already talked a lot about the merits of classroom education. But see, did you see one thing that while I was talking, you could also have felt that there are many limitations of classroom education. What are the main limitations? The main limitation is this, that education becomes immensely subjective. Education becomes subjective. What do I mean by that? What I mean is, when I am faced with my students, if there are 50 students who are sitting in this class, and I am the only one speaking, 
they have come, they are like tibula rasa in Latin, means a clean slate, okay? Whatever I write shall be written in your mind. So education becomes subjective. You feel that everything that I am saying is right, but no man is infallible. No human being is infallible, okay? It doesn't even happen in the empirical sciences. The principles of the uh, incident, he was a student of, uh, he is a student of physics. Ask him that even the empirical sciences are not that objective as we think them to be. Right? Principia of Isaac Newton was transmuted when Laplace brought his theories. Right? However, science being much more objective, it makes sense that science needs classroom education or classroom education is mandatory for empirical sciences because predominantly science exchanges objective knowledge. However, apart from science, when you come to the social sciences and when you come to literature, it is entirely a question of subjectivity. You don't come to the class in order to receive certain information. Information, as I told you, is available in, uh, on the internet. You come to the class in order to get a test of my mind, of my intellect. Okay? So, why? This is a positive question on the one hand, that you are getting a slice of what I might possess. At the same time, if the teacher is mediocre, then you have a limitation over that. Okay? Because you think that the teacher is sacrosanct. You are not challenging his intellect at any point in time. This is one thing. You see how the classrooms are devised. If you notice something where I am standing, I am standing on empires. This was first pointed out by <coughs> Michel Foucault in the Archaeology of Knowledge. Okay? What do we say? Let's see, even when the classroom is devised in a way so that the teacher gets total attention. When I'm standing on a dais, see, I mean, geometrically, I am raised. I am raised by a platform. And this is a symbolic way to let the student understand that this person is important, the teacher is important, right? Tamil Bochina, Fuko Bochina, Kung Shokti Badei Bochina. You are the superior. You are the superior. Come on. You are watching me. All of you are watching me. I am the center of attraction, see? Therefore, I am raised on a platform. Why can I not stand here and speak? And why should I stand also? Why can't I even sit and speak? But that will not be permissible in a classroom mode of education. In a classroom mode of education, you normally have a dais which is raised above the basic plane so as to project the teacher on a higher level. So you see, even the architectonics or the architecture is devised in a way so that the teacher gets attention. However, this getting attention has its limitation also. This limitation comes from the fact that the teacher then starts behaving like a panoptic model. Now again, I am giving you another idea for people who do not know. Let me tell you, this also is a very, very modern concept which was given initially by Jeremy Bentham and it was developed later by again Michel Foucault. He is such a great thinker of the 21st century. He says that, see, almost all institution behaves in a panoptic model. Pan optic, pan meaning all, optic to see, all seeing model. Okay. When I am raised on the platform, the students seated here, they are going to be hey, I am being watched. Everybody is watching me. Sorry, not everybody. Sun is watching. Sun is watching. You see? If I am seated here at your level, I cannot watch everyone. Can I watch everyone? No. When I am standing here, or say if this dais is raised one foot more, then I can see all of you. Right? This is called the pan optic model, the all seeing model. I'll give you a simple example you will understand how the panoptic model operates. This operates in all sphere of your life. Now only you will understand when I give you this example. 
If you go, I have not seen kiosks here. You can be, uh, there are kiosks also. Police kiosks in there now. You, you know kiosks? The small room that they make where the traffic police sits inside. Uh, just outside is the traffic signal. Right? Actually, he's supposed to sit there. He's supposed to sit there. The signal is there. Huh? Initially, men being, I mean, free in so far as his mind is concerned, we always feel, even I feel today at this age, of transgressing the traffic signal. But I don't. You know why? Because there is always a feeling at the back of my mind that the traffic police is sitting inside that room. This was the same concept which was given by Jeremy Bentham in his prison reform, actually Britain, prison reform court Jeremy Bentham at the model engagement. Model that you don't know. Model that you don't know. Model that you don't know. You know, she always prison the device for a work. He was of the opinion that prisons should be devised in this manner. Okay? How? It was a semicircular structure. Okay? Full of cells. Every cell was separated by a wall so that the imprisoned person, the convict, could not see each other. Okay? It was devised in a way geometrically so that the convicts cannot see each other. Clear? Yeah? At the center of that ground, was a huge long tower and on top of the tower was a small room which was absolutely dark and the guard was supposed to sit there right and he was supposed to cast an eye on all the inmates everyone who has been imprisoned right what did Jeremy Bentham say in his prison reform he said that if you build this sort of a structure this Structure is called the panoptic structure, all seeing structure. See, it was devised in a way so that all the prisoners they could see the guard. Everyone can see the guard. Okay? But the prisoners cannot see each other. Bentham was of the opinion that in course of time you will not need a guard at all. Because they will come to believe that a guard is always present there and I have to behave myself. Right? So in course of time, even if the room is empty, all the prisoners will maintain system and maintain their behavior. Right? This was the Jeremy Bentham's prison reform which came, which gave it to the British Parliament. But then this was taken up by Michel Foucault, the French thinker, as a basic principle on which almost all society or all societal institution operates. That is on the panoptic model. I just give you an example. When I am seated or when I am standing on a platform, this panoptic model is already operating. The student who is sitting out here, he is feeling that sun is watching me, sun is watching me. Right? So you are afraid of me. Actually, in the course of that, when I am delivering the lecture, the student does not have his full fledged attention in what I am saying. He is rather he has been made conscious of his presence. Hey, I behave properly first. Again, I demerit of the, of the classroom system of education. Right? So, if I have to sum it up, what shall I say? That the classroom system of education has been a prevalent mode of education, but then the classroom system of education has its limitations. What limitation? The first limitation is the scholarship of the teacher. Most teachers Forget about the students, okay? Most teachers are not as scholarly as they are supposed to be. As they are supposed to be. That becomes a limitation. Because students try to emulate them. But what are you getting in the process? What are you getting in the process? Question yourself. As opposed to this, now comes a different mode. And I complete this within the next five minutes. A different mode of education has been made possible by the development or due to the development of technology. What is that? The hybrid mode of education. Sorry, hybrid mode is a different word, but, but by coming to college as well as uh, digital form of education, both are valid. But in the offline mode of education, say for instance, when during COVID, if I am taking an offline class, so all of us, we took offline classes, right? On Google Meet. That can be a very good source of education. <laughs> this is not the only, I am simply projecting the 
merits as well as the merits of both the form of education. In the offline world, what is the main merit? The main merit is <laughs> the predominant merit of offline mode of education is this that you are not under the gaze of the teacher. The gaze of the teacher is gone. And you do not have to fight with the teacher's gaze that I am being watched. So therefore, you have a sense of freedom in the first place. Secondly, when you take recourse to digitalized mode of education, and today, for the last 20, 30 years, because of the technological boom that has come over in at least the arena of um, extents, that is in, in the knowledge world, you have a wider reach to every form of knowledge. Previously, when we even when we were students, whatever the teacher taught us, we thought that everything is correct. It is only when I started growing up, and that too did not happen with all of us, okay? For the conscious among us, when we started growing up, the first thing we had to do was we had to unlearn everything that we had learned. And then we have to start learning fresh. Why? Because everything that he had imparted to us at that point in time was filtered through his own subjectivity and through his limited scholarship. But now, in this era of digital technology, you have a wider recourse. You type out whatever the topic that a teacher is taking up in class. Why should you? Be silent spectator, and why should you take the teacher at face value? You can go home or you have your phone, open up, Google it up, see. Even at the information level, for instance, the social sciences, we, all of us, we must be knowing the historical facts, even the basic historical facts of this country that we were fed with last, say, 30, 30 40 years ago, they are all changing these days. We are coming out with the new facts because these facts then was not taught to us. Okay? So everything, every form of knowledge apart from objective scientific truth, not scientific discourse. Scientific discourse is also subjective. But scientific facts are objective. Okay? But apart from that, everything will fall under the area of subjectivity and therefore it can be challenged. Right? So no knowledge, no knowledge is sacrosanct. No one can claim that this is true. So what digital education has brought about, what this blended mode has given us an opportunity, is that we can take recourse to both of them. There can be, you will, you will come to the class, you will face your teacher, okay? You can sift. Digital technology is a teacher who 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 is is the case, to just conclude, I would rather say that not merely insisting on classroom education at the same time, education should be made into a hybrid model, you know, because if you do not bring access to technological tools, if you do not teach your students to get information from multiple sources, then education will always remain a subjective endeavor. Education will always be confined and the scope of education will be limited forever. Thank you so much for being here.
ব্যবহার ইউনিভার্সিটির ক্ষেত্রে এই সমস্ত বিষয়টাকে খুব সুন্দর করে আমাদের সামনে উপস্থাপন করলেন তার জন্য আমরা আন্তরিকভাবে কৃতজ্ঞ এবং we are going to have a parents teacher meet so all students have to bring their mother or father to the class okay so i hope all of you will bring your parents to the college and we will meet with them it's just a meeting just a introduction with the college and the functioning of the college and uh, how we are planning a number of things for your futures that is why it is my request to all the students to bring their parents to the college not only those who are present right now i request all the present students who are present in this program to spread this news among your friends so that they can also bring their parents we are planning to have that program in the in new building seminar hall and it would be better if all of your parents will come along. okay so please spread this news with your friends also okay thank you